Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech and Tech Advice at Life video. I am with Margaret Lee, the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Digital Services and Operations Management at BMC. We're here at the BMC Connect 23 conference in Melbourne. Welcome, Margaret, to the program. Thank you. Hello, Alex. Thanks for taking the time. Now, before we go further, can you please tell us about your role at BMC and what you and your team looks after? Well, at BMC, I lead the teams that build the products uh, for digital service and operations management. So that means the products for service desk, for employee self-service, for monitoring, for knock center, for AI ops, all on the Helix platform. Now, uh, speaking of Helix, uh, you've got a new product called Helix GPT. GPT, of course, and AI mm -hmm. is a super hot topic right now. It's become much more advanced than we've ever seen it before. And uh, those at the live event heard how BMC has harnessed GPT. But uh, for everyone watching, uh, what at a high level, because we're going to go into more detail in a moment, what is BMC doing in this space? Yes, Alex. So first thing, Helix GPT is not a product per se. It's more of an infusing AI, the generative AI, into our existing Helix products, whether in service or operations management. And uh, BMC has been working with AI for many years, and especially in the last uh, three, four years, uh, we've done a lot with uh, large language models. Before it became so, uh, all of a sudden, very popular yeah. after the open AI you know, uh, uh, revolution, I suppose, and toward the end of 2022. As early as 2021, we've used a lot of large language models to do things like uh, analyze and process problem tickets that comes into a service desk, okay? And then to help service desk teams to proactively uh, manage them, to prioritize them, to cluster them, to find and common insights across hundreds of tickets so that they can you know, deal with the most important one first. And that kind of capability was already in our product in 2021, you know, almost two years, uh, a year and a half before before the the latest round of buzz around generative AI, and uh, of course we continue with our innovation. Uh, we're looking to build additional new capabilities related and powered by generative generative AI into Helix. Yeah. Well, let's go a little bit deeper then. You know, you also gave an example in your talk, which was uh, just happening before we are speaking right now, about how querying that support panel or support portal normally gives a stack of answers in a search engine style, you know, the 10 blue links, as they would talk about with Google results, yeah. uh, which some people can quickly give up on because, you know, it's just a wall of information. You've got to click on this and it's not quite right. And you click on another one and so you give up and you ring support, thereby sort of not wasting a person's time, but you're not really self-servicing. Mm -hmm. So you then gave the example of how we, uh, of how this was transformed with AI, which as you said, you've been doing for quite a while now, with the ability to chat with both a virtual support agent that is AI powered and has GPT level responses, but also augmented by an answer engine. I like that mm. when you said answer engine as opposed to search engine. Mm -hmm. instead, of a, instead of a search engine, complete with step-by-step -step instructions, a video and more, all customized to the operating system you're using. So tell us a bit more about that in a bit more depth. Yeah, so during my session, I gave the example of an employee who has a problem with VPN. And that's a very common type of uh, issue in employees encounter, right? When someone encounters that, they want to be able to solve that problem, just connect to VPN as quickly as possible. And today, in, with many of the knowledge management systems, employees will go in, like I said, and they do a quick search for answer, they come back with lots of links, Inevitably, they read these two articles. People, you know, would read three, four, five articles and give up, and then say, "Forget it. I'm going to file a support ticket." Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, Connect to my computer via Team Viewer and just do it for me. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, I was not the one to come up with the term um, "answer engine." I, I believe I read it somewhere, and that's the fundamental difference to have the best employee experience. You know, people call it consumerization, mm. right? When in our consumer days, when we ask a question, whether it's to Apple or, or Facebook or social media, we want to get the kind of immediate, really customized context relevant answer. And that's what uh, uh, people want in their enterprise life, right? Well, I have a question, rather than ask me to read 10 articles, just give me the answer, yeah. show me, and by video, for example, step by step, and solve the problem for me, not for my colleague who was on a different 
system, different operating, you know, uh, system, different machine. Understand my situation, yeah. solve the problem, show me how to solve the problem for me. And that's really where we think that AI, particularly generative, can help significantly improve employee experience, which obviously will lead to retention, morale, and all of that good benefits. Now, I also just saw that you, you, know, you had a section where you had a dashboard, yeah. and it was showing um, you know, critical events happening, and the AI was able to summarize in just a sentence what was going on. It wasn't a human that typed that, and it was something you could show, you know, your yeah. boss if they were coming up, yeah. give me a you know, the short <laughs> version of what's happening. So just briefly tell us about that, because that was really cool. Yeah, that's something we're very excited about. We call it uh, incident summarization, right? Um, it, these days, with uh, more and more companies um, uh, adopt agile methodology, continuous DevOps, et cetera, et cetera, what that actually means is more changes go into the system, mm -hmm. right? And more changes inevitably will cause issues, right? Because in general, computer systems, if you don't touch it, usually it's okay. If it ain't break, don't fix it, right? <laughs> if you don't touch it, right, it's okay. <laughs> but, you know, inevitably people want to do releases and new functionality and new workloads, something will change. So as a result, the whole practice of proactive monitoring um, and then uh, res resolve things, remediate things when things come, uh, um, goes awry is becoming more and more popular, right? So there's constant practice, there's a lot of practice of what happens in a bridge, meaning there's an outage bridge to do, you know, remediation, issue resolution, find ICA, etc. Et that, that's just something that companies do day in and day out and you should get very good at. In that context, if anybody has ever seen, you know, IT logs or server names, they're very cryptic, yeah. right? And it's very difficult to explain in a quick sentence what is going on. You know, server running out of memory, or database running out of storage, or um, system overload because ten, you know all of a sudden experiencing 10x the um, request. Those are quick summaries that any business user executives can quickly understand, and. Uh, so today, a lot of companies, what they do is they constantly ask the knock center monitoring team to answer those questions, whether via chat, on the screen, etc. right? But if you can get into the world where by looking at the context of the incident, by looking at the systems that are involved, by looking at incident tickets coming in, have generated AI to a quick summary, right? And that, and that summary gets updated every hmm. 30 minutes, right? As you discover new things, yeah. that would be a very, very effective way of communication, right? Not just to the immediate situation, but you know, all the impacted uh, uh, teams and related teams. So that's something, a very concrete use case, uh, a quick real-time incident summary is uh, something that uh, our customers are very excited about. Yeah, well, I mean, before the generative AI revolution took off with ChatGPT, one of the things people were speaking about mm. was the concept that AI cannot be a black box. It needs to be explainable. Mm. It needs to explain itself. Yeah. And this is part of that. I mean, it's it's explaining very, it's summarizing very quickly what's going on so that you can share that information. And it's not just, oh, yeah, trust me, I'm the AI, I'm fixing it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, tell us a bit more about BMC's focus on AI ops, seeing it on the topic of AI, and its role in the overall connected digital ops that BMC enables for its customers. Right, so AI ops is a term that's been around for a while, right? And uh, the operative word is ops in this case, right? Well, that, that just means that the operations management team, right? The infusing, initially it's called algorithmic, now is artificial intelligence, yeah. right? Uh, infusing that to benefit uh, the operations team, hence AI ops. Now, it, that's a very important space for BMC because, one, um, it's a space that BMC historically have been uh, very strong in. Where there's been literally multiple generations of IT systems, data centers, everything from mainframe to distributed to cloud that a large uh, uh, number of BMC customers use our tools to monitor, to manage. So that's a space BMC know really well. So we want to make sure that as as technologies progress, we are continuously uh, just ahead of our customers to provide their operations team with the latest set of technologies, right? So AI ops is important to us because we recognize several things uh, as the technology progress in the space. One is the nature of um, 
multiple tools being used in the enterprise. Right? BMC is a company we serve as we say, 86% of the Fortune 100. When you talk about global companies like that, inevitably, they're a complex uh, uh, deployment environment. There are many, many different tools. Each have a niche and also use case to monitor a certain system, certain type of uh, 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 component of the system, network, you know, database, server, cloud, whatnot. So we as a vendor that has historically strength in monitoring with the operations team, AI ops can pull data from all the variety of data sources, be it servers and logs and, and metrics and events, into a, a sort of large data layer and apply AI to help our operations team do clustering, to incident summary, to proactive notification, even recommend remediation, right? So that's the space where we believe um, the operations team needs as they go into the future. Not just one-off individual monitoring of certain type of system and then be, de be dealing with a, an ocean of alarms. That's not helpful to the operations team. It's to be able to pull a variety of data and synthesize it and give them like highly focused recommendation um, and be, be able to give them highly relevant you know, RCA analysis, those are the things that's going to be helpful to our customers. That's why AI Ops is important to BMC because it continues to carry on our strength and to serve a customer uh, use case and persona that we know we do. Now, I want to ask you about service ops, but before I do, I often think I'm in the wrong industry. I should be in marketing or something, because I, I was, as you were telling me about this, I was thinking, uh, I was listening to what you were saying, but I was also thinking that if you have BMC software's connected digital ops, you will avoid disconnected digital oops. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay. So please tell us about yeah. service ops. Yeah, so this is a trend that we definitely have seen in the... Uh, uh, in our customer base for last few years, maybe even longer. And isn't this something that gotten is just? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, very happy. We this is something that we communicated to the analyst community, and they validated for us the our observations and which guides our strategy. And service ops, ops ultimately resulted. Um, it got started when we found that. Uh, change management, incident management, release management are some of the most popular, often used components, modules of our service management solution. Mm -hmm. Okay, And the question is why? And the why is really as more enterprises adopt Agile, adopt DevOps practices, right? So the their system, the frequency with which their system is changing dramatically increased. It used to be that okay, an application gets updated, released twice a year, okay? Now it's once a week. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, it's con the CI-CD continuous integration, continuous release model, everybody wants to be the next Netflix, right? Mm. So as that kind of large volume of change goes into the system, inevitably on the operations side, they're seeing more any change will cause outages or slowdowns or issues. So this loop of release and change management from service management desk that immediately cause impact in operations side. And then when operations side trying to resolve the issue, it needs to feed that information back to the service desk to say, to say that yes, we know what changed, we know the root cause, the expected ETA for resolutions, blah, please communicate this to the end user. This change cause operation, operation diagnose RCA back, that loop is faster and faster, right? And more and more uh, frequently happen in customers. And that's what we term in service ops because Helix, by putting all the change tickets, uh, problem tickets, incident tickets on the same data platform as your alarms, alerts, you know, traces, logs, that gives you the ability to tap into both sides of the data and communicate things much, much faster. So we are uh, we started calling the service ops in beginning 2021, and then um, that's a trend. Uh, we did our survey, uh, something like 70, in, in 2022, 73, 74% of companies are moving these two teams closer, yeah. oftentimes under the same umbrella, and uh, we are enable a lot of these cross uh, capabilities between the two, and that's been very, um, quite a bit of resonating with our customers. 
And look, I'm not sure if it was Ayman, the CEO, who was mentioning it in his talk, or Ram, the CTO, but he was talking about how you've been able to go ticketless because of the advancements of, of your entire platform. Yeah, so the ticketless is in the, I can't remember which one of either, it's part of it is in how end users are changing the way they, in, they work with, um, with their system, right? So what we find is that there's definitely a generational shift happening. Uh, the newer uh, entrants to the workforce are much, much more comfortable dealing with bots or chats, mm. right? So they, they look, sort of look at you funny if you want them to call the 800 number, like what is a phone, right? Yeah. But even if you say, okay, go to this URL, open this web page, create a ticket, they do a bit reluctantly, right? Well, their expectation, the experience, they put a issue question to a chat bot and then get some answers back. And if there's additional follow-ups needed, a ticket's automatically created behind the scenes, yeah. right? And then they follow up uh, additional information needed, resolutions done, all of that gets informed, they get informed via chat. So in that sense, it is ticketless yeah. because they don't see themselves as having created a ticket. All they see is, I put a request in and the request got served. It's yeah. a much more seamless way of doing things. And, and that's yeah. the experience that more and more employees are expecting. So uh, are there any customer success stories using your technologies and the new uh, Helix GPT that you want to highlight briefly? Yeah, so we released several major um, capabilities uh, in the 21-22 series of Helix that's been in production for almost two years now. So we have definitely customer using what we call proactive problem management, right? What that is, that's a capability looking through hundreds and thousands of problem tickets um, that our customers have. Uh, summarize them, find commonalities, and then help the problem management team prioritize the still to maybe top 10, top 20 problems, right? We definitely have customers uh, in Europe, a large automotive company, using that to make their service desk much more effective of uh, resolving problems and uh, uh, find commonality to prevent future problems. And uh, we have more customers adopting our AI-based capabilities every day. Now, one of the questions I'd like to ask before we wrap up, because we're running short on time, mm. is can you please share a memory of your first computer? <laughs> well, probably dating myself, as I said earlier. Um, I, I remember playing with Pac-Man. That's probably the first handheld <laughs> gamer gaming that I uh, played with in the 80s. And in the 9... No, this also still in the 80s. Um, doing basic yeah. programming basic on commodore yeah yeah absolutely yeah. a lot of <laughs> so, us of, of the same age remember that fondly. so yeah commodore programming that's probably my very very early computer experience yeah oh uh, typing things from computer magazines we uh, well, as i said those of us of a certain age all remember it only too fondly yeah commodore that was a very very interesting uh, piece of the device. tape drive and the joysticks yeah Yep. And uh, my second last question is to ask if you could please share some of the best advice you've received in life to help you get where you are today. Oh, um, thank you for that. Um, the business that we're in, at least I am in, in technology, it's one of those you, you can't help it, but you have to. And I'm, I'm happy to say I'm interested in constant learning, right? There is, so that's something that uh, I really enjoy doing, uh, but also is a necessity because every I remember, for example, in 2014, where the concept of Docker containers first came out, right? No one knew anything like that. So you couldn't possibly expect to learn everything you need to learn in you, at the university. Right? Everything you learn from the university three or five years later, it's, you know, it's out of date. Uh, it's out of date. <laughs> so continuous learning, follow up, and um, it's, a, it's a must have, and, and it's something you really should enjoy from the technology business, which, well, I, which I do. It's a little bit how. Uh, people are saying that it's not digital transformation that's important, but it's continuous improvement, yes. which is part of that whole continuous learning. And so what is your final message to yeah. the uh, viewers and the readers? Yeah, well, if you're reading this article, then you might be hearing more about BMC's innovations and transformation, right? BMC has been a company that many, many Fortune 100 global companies relied on for a better part of 40 years, right? And will continue on this journey to make sure our products is um, useful and support large companies or companies of all sizes, right? Take them into the next generation, whether it's be cloud, whether it's infused with AI. And I know it's a bit of a trite, you know, to go from 
from mainframe or the into mobile, BMC is a very, very technology savvy company. Well, Margaret Lee, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Digital Service and Operations Management at BMC. Thank you very much for your time. I wish you the best of success with the rest of BMC Connect 23, and I hope we can speak again in the future. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Bye-bye.